I've been doing some detailing on this old truck and I guess it's kind of starting to look okay for an old truck not too bad still need to wash the windows clean the windows good but yeah I got her kind of polished out there and it's been sitting and had a lot of dust on it they got it cleaned up and got the wheels took all the wheels off and cleaned them really good and cleaned the lug nuts and they were starting to get a little rust on them so got a little steel wool and work those over a bit yeah I think I might be about ready to take it out and drive it a little bit it's getting kind of dark and I don't know if you'll be able to see the interior at all but uh yeah i kind of been doing some work in there and got the floor cleaned up a little bit the seat cleaned up a little bit the door panels cleaned up a little bit so this is my old truck i just happened to remember something today that i did when i was restoring this truck a few years ago and actually i was trying to remember when i bought this thing when my son was just a little guy he's 25 and uh, I guess he was about two years old and he used to sit in his car seat here and kick the dash. And he kicked this thing and this thing was just all dented and beat in. And I uh, drove it that way for years and years. This, of course, would have been wood grain. Uh, tin, tin wood grain, of course, simulated. But uh, it was all beat up. So I thought, well, what am I going to do with that? And I took that off. And I laid it upside down on the bench, on the workbench, on a towel. And I got myself one of those old casters from an office chair, a round one. They used to make round ones, maybe still do. But um, it's totally round. And I started rolling that out. And lo and behold, rolled all the dents out of that. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. It came out pretty smooth. And then I stuck it in the uh, sandblaster. And I just frosted that aluminum and then put some clear on it and ran a little bit of pinstriping around in there. And so that's kind of kind of what I did with that. And, you know, it's got a couple of little custom things like that. I replaced these little bow tie emblems here on these little corner pieces. And so the old ones I took off and I did the same thing. I put those in the, uh, you won't be able to see this, I don't think, but I put them in the sandblaster and frosted those little pieces and then I put them up on my visor here and I'll have to shoot this in the, in the daytime when there's more light but anyway that's a couple of little custom touches just made out of some stuff that was uh, left over yeah I think I'm gonna, gonna drive the old girl a little bit this fall so something else I've been kind of working on here I was going to show you is I was, I was joking around with a friend of mine on the email today and I said, now what is it they call those things that, that are made out of leather or, or rubber and they cover the uh, the shifter and they go down over the shift, the stick shift and bolt to the floor. Oh yeah, a boot, a boot, that's what they're called. They're called a boot. So there's your shifter boot. I'll get on the other side and show you a further thing. Uh, that I'm going to do on this, but uh, I've mentioned a couple times that I, I don't like to copy other people's ideas, and for the most part, everything on this truck I've kind of come up with on my own, except uh, every once in a while you run across something that's just so cool you can't leave it alone, and that's been the case with me on this boot. This is a shifter boot, and I like that idea so. I'm gonna run with that. Of course the other idea that I stole now I stole this one and I asked permission for the other one. There was a guy who had a Model A with uh, those barbed wire plug wires on it. I'm gonna turn this fan off. Uh, guy on YouTube had the Model A and he had it uh, running on one cylinder and it's sitting there popping off on one cylinder and I think he was playing the guitar with the rhythm of that motor on that one cylinder. Uh, I've seen our peak do that set out and plays banjo with the rhythm in that, uh, that Cadillac motor. He's got his hot rod 
uh, it's kind of fun. But anyway, I wrote to the guy, and I, I really told him how much I love these plug wires, and and even asked him if uh, he'd mind if I if I made some of my own. And of course, you know, you don't have to ask, but I thought it'd be polite, and so I asked him, and. He goes, oh yeah, and he told me how he did it and everything. He said, oh yeah, that's great. I want to see him when you get done. So we swapped videos a little bit. And, and uh, that's the other thing that was not my idea, and I give credit to where credit's due. This uh, shifter boot deal was, uh, I think, came from uh, Welder Up, Welder Up Iron for a uh, rig there building in uh, Las Vegas. And uh, I'm going to go to the I have to go to the Goodwill store somewhere and see if I can get a boot that's uh, uh, colorful and has a real nice pattern on it. You know, maybe one that was used uh, when somebody was square dancing or something where they're kind of decorative and and uh, that might be kind of fun. But the other idea that I ran across today when I was working on that boot thing was I cut the sole off of it, of course. It's, then I got the idea, well, hmm, how about this? Why don't we do this? So I took these soles off, and I'm going to cut a portion of this off, I think, right about there. And see if I can't mount those up there and make my little brake pedals and my, and my clutch pedal. And uh, I don't know, I might just use the heels. That might be a pretty good arm, fairly small. Uh, they have to be really to fit in there. But I don't know if I'll take a piece across here. And just put a little piece on there but uh might be kind of cool to use the heel part and you could use the whole thing and i think people would still be able to recognize it and know what it is so, fun stuff you know the rat rod and just keeps on going thanks for watching